1220 WSUN, St. Petersburg, Tampa, Clearwater. Radio with a little TNA. Talk and attitude. AM 620 WSUN is pleased to announce that it's time for the Bob Lasseter Show. And now, Bob Lasseter, the Mad Dog, on AM 620 WSUN, entertaining talk radio. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the way I would normally start my show, but I have something that uh, I have to tell you about. It may have some type of an effect on whether or not you wish to continue listening to this program or <sighs> a lot of other things, I suppose. I have um, I've been lying to you. I've been telling you barefaced lies. Uh, in an effort uh, to, yeah, I, they, they, it wasn't done maliciously. It was done in an effort to um, save face and uh, try to uh, build confidence and good relations with the people that I work for and work with. But uh, I can no longer hide any of this from you. I work with idiots and morons. We love and you too, Bobby. Shut up. <laughs> and... This was demonstrated yesterday at approximately 5.30 when the station went off the air. The things I'm about to tell you actually happened. <clears throat> at approximately 5.30, I'm sitting here and I'm talking. And I see out of the corner of my eye, Ross Reback's bean counter standing out in the hall, jumping up and down, making horrible faces and running his index finger across his neck as though, you know, he were cutting himself. Well, the man is an accountant, and, you know, it was uh, an, uh, an important uh, accounting day yesterday, the 15th. Uh, the extensions were due yesterday, and, and so I figured he had just kind of lost it. And I continued on with my program, but he continued out there, and so finally I could take it no longer, and I said, Dwayne, what's the matter? And he mouthed something without speaking. And I indicated again, you know, what is the matter, Dwayne? And he said, you're off the air. I said, what? He said, you're, you're off the air. I said, what, Dwayne? He said, you're off the air. And I said, well, why didn't you just say so? And he said, I didn't want to go on the air. <laughs> It gets a lot worse. It gets a lot worse. So I inform, I'm informed that I have to continue on with the show, even though we are not on the air, because the show runs on tape at a later time. Well, most mornings, I am told, Bennington gets in here and just turns the microphone on in the other studio so that people can kind of listen in to them prepping their show. And the last half hour of this show isn't run. So then I'm informed, well, what if he's late? So I have to sit here conducting a show when the station isn't on the air, with no one listening, no callers, in case Bennington is late. It gets worse. <laughs> Several moments into this fiasco, we receive a fax from the office which is located about a quarter of a mile from here. It is also where the news wires are. They know that we're off the air. They fax us over a weather bulletin. The people in the control room take the weather bulletin fax from the machine and run with it into the studio and thrust it into Sharon Taylor's hands. Sharon interrupts me and immediately proceeds reading it. To no one. We're off the air. Two people on hold. One of whom worked here. I know, pathetic. <laughs> it gets worse. <sighs> we have a break scheduled at 543. <laughs> During the 543 break, we run a traffic report. I don't think I'm giving away too many state secrets here. The traffic report is taped. The reason it is taped is because frequently, if I don't hit the brake at exactly the right time, then the person doing the traffic is also doing the traffic on nine other radio stations. And so, you know, like there's nobody there to do traffic, and we just play the traffic intro, and then there's, you know, ten seconds of dead air before Jeffy finally plays a commercial, throws things around the control room, curses, calls them up, and says, hey, you know, I'm coming back to you after this commercial. And then finally we... So we just tape the damn things now and play them back to you a moment or two later. 
I look up and I see Jeffy taping a traffic report. <clears throat> I said, Jeffy, we're off the air. Nobody can hear the traffic report. He says, that's okay. Go to tape it anyway. Well, okay, there is the possibility that we could come back on the air at any moment. So, I, you know, this, this isn't really too bad. So I go to the 543 break. Jeffy plays the traffic report. Now, keep in mind, I am doing this show in case Bennington is late. And it has to run on tape tomorrow morning. But if it runs on tape, they cover the traffic reports with, uh, you know, commercials or PSAs or music. I don't know how the hell they cover them. I don't care how they cover them. The point is, it doesn't run on the tape. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I work with idiots and morons. I have tried to hide this fact from you so the we. entire time. I, yeah, I know you work with each other. I've tried to hide this fact from you the entire time I have been here. I did perhaps the best half hour of my life yesterday because all I did was I sat here and simply reported on what was going on around me. You have never seen anything like it in your entire life. I apologize. I am stuck with the staff. There's nothing I can do about it. The only time they seem to shine is when we're off the air. <laughs> with luck, we'll go off the air again today, and I'll have another great, hilarious show just recounting what they are doing. <laughs> Reading a weather bulletin. What if you didn't have you us? You read a around? weather bulletin, Sharon, Sharon, into a microphone that wasn't connected to anything. So? And you knew it. So how do we know if anybody's ever listening anyway? Oh, Jesus, God, I'm on this. Couldn't tell by You me. see what I told you? You see? You see? Well, that about sums up. <laughs> <sighs> so you can make your decision as to whether or not you want to continue to listen to this radio station or not based upon what I told you, but it's, it's just time that I be honest with you. Some stations give you cars. Some stations give you cash. But this station is going to send you into the future. That's right. We're going to use the latest cryogenic technology to freeze and preserve your body until the year 3000. If it's good enough for Walt Disney, it's good enough for you. When you wake up in the year 3000, scientists will have discovered a cure for acne. There'll be 48,000 cable channels. And by then, your boss and everyone who's ever made your life a living hell will be dead. Stone cold dead. Just be the 10th caller when you hear this sound, and we'll hit you over the head with a baseball bat and shove you into the station refrigerator, along with a note saying, do not thaw until the year 3000. This station accepts no responsibility for freezer burns, the effects of occasional power outages, and any funny smell you might pick up over the years from the afternoon guy's lunch. You'll be alive in the year 3000, and you'll smell like meatloaf. Keep listening for your chance to win. 11 minutes after the hour of 2 o'clock, a very good afternoon to you fun seekers, or those of you who are left after we have finally divulged the truth here. It is a, uh, what, it's a Wednesday, August the uh, 16th, 1995. I, I am the Magnificent Lasseter, as I proved during the last half hour of this program yesterday that no one will ever hear, that no one heard while we were doing it. And I am assisted on the other side of the glass by a man who tapes and runs traffic reports when we're off the air. <clears throat> Jeffy. Hello, Jeffy. How are you? Hey, Bob, are we on the air? We must be. You're not playing a traffic report. <laughs> hey, greetings, Mr. Lasseter. How the hell are you? To my left is Sharon the Body Taylor, a woman who breathlessly reads weather bulletins. Wish I had one when now. When we're off the air. Wish. Oh, but I had a severe thunderstorm warning or something for the next couple of moments. That's when I shine. I do have a Felix update. You want to hear the latest on Felix? Wait, who in the hell is Felix? The Another hurricane. Cat or something? The hurricane. It's, it's 500 miles north of here. So? So? So did you sit in bed with Geraldo last night? Promptly no, at 9 o'clock? No, I was out with Felix. To see what was happening? Damn straight I did. Uh -huh. Thought you Apparently would. some even weirder stuff is happening today, but I don't know what. Oh, well, the prosecution's decided that they, uh, they don't want to... They don't really back down. Right, they backed off. Changed her mind. So they decided that he's a, they have a lot of faith in him. No, this, this goes beyond that. Uh, the uh, All I know, and I don't know why, but the defense has 
said that they are going to uh, report the prosecution to the Bar Association or something like that. And the prosecution says they're going to uh, Get report the uh, defense uh, to uh, yeah. the Attorney General. Yeah. <laughs> Darden went off on another one of his tangents. and I have, I have quite a few things to say about the, the trial a little bit later on. Quite a few things. Uh, this is, this is uh, it, it's way beyond the scope of... Of, of anything that is reasonable. Anniversary of Elvis's death. Did you know he didn't used to bathe? Did I, I, did I ask Watch you what's yourself. going on? I'm volunteering. We'll, we'll get to that I'm momentarily. I'm feeling charitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go to his cell phone. I sell you on the air WSUN. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. Good afternoon, cell phone. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. If only you guys could have heard what went on here for the last half hour yesterday of this show. Well, your recounting of the story reminds me of uh, one of my favorite WKRP in Cincinnati episodes where their transmitter was blown up and Les Nessman, the newsman, came running in to report that their transmitter had been blown up. That is, in essence, what happened here yesterday. I, I have made none of this up. He's exaggerating. He's making the whole thing up just I'm to make surprised. himself look good. I'm I am surprised. telling you the gospel's <laughs> truth. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't send over a fax from the home office to have uh, Sharon report that the transmitter was down and that you were not on the air. Well, you see, what you don't know is that uh, WKRP in Cincinnati was deadly accurate. There was only one, one glaring problem with the program, and that is that every radio station, I don't care what radio station you're talking about, how big the market, how small the market, every radio station's chief engineer is a lunatic. <laughs> and a, ca a colorful character. And there was no chief engineer in WKRP, which I do not understand because everything else, I mean, every receptionist or secretary runs the station. All right. Uh, every general manager, of course, with the exception of ours, is uh, <clears throat> just like, uh, you know, the, the big cheese was there. It, it was a deadly accurate show. People in the industry were glued to their television sets every single episode, would not miss one. Yep, and I believe every sales manager wore that uh, flammable leisure suit, didn't he? Uh, yes, they did, and still do. And I, I swear to you, to this day, uh, there is a phrase from that show that is uttered, it is the only thing that will get you out of a major, major, major mess-up. But if you look uh, your boss in the eye and you, and you say with all sincerity, with God as my witness, I thought the turkeys could fly... Yeah. <laughs> then you can get out from underneath whatever you have done. You can only say it once in your career at a, at, uh, at a station, but uh, it still buys you out from virtually any any major mess up. Well, when I uh, when I listen to your show, I, I think of KRP, and I uh, I just imagine the cast of characters there. Sir, even I didn't know about the cast of characters here until yesterday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, try and live through it, Bob. Okay, dude. Take care. Be good. 576 WSUN in Pinellas and Hillsboro. 221 WSUN. And, of course, toll free. 1 800 356 WSUN. Think I want to feel your leg. You feel legged yourself. What are you talking about? I was just trying to get the newspaper out from under it. You're accusing me of trying to feel your leg. You were touching my leg, but that happened a half an hour ago well, in another room. Didn't get a chance to respond properly. Just that I remind you that I don't want to touch your leg. You see what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I am the only person here playing with a full deck. The rest of them are crazy. <laughs> it's 216. You never know what's going to happen on the Gary Spivey Show. Was it your sister that called in? Donna. And I was giving her all these predictions, and she yeah. was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. Exactly. You, and, you described her boyfriend to a T. Yes. And go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, now, here's, Gary. Well, no, here's the thing. And at the end of the call, I said, now, what's this about all this spanking? You like to get spanked. Well, you said, what's this about the spanking? And she had no idea what you were talking about. Right, but I saw, I saw you know, I was, picking up this vi I was picking up this vibration of her liking to get spanked. No, and it wasn't spanking her. So. It wasn't her. The, the whole time she was on the phone phone with you, my other sister Kathy was trying to call in. Oh, and I see. Kathy and Donna used to live together before Kathy was married, and her boyfriend Rob, who's now her husband, oh. they used to always have sex in the bedroom, and she'd get spanked. Oh, nice. <laughs> you always have to listen. Gary Spivey, weeknights, 6 till 8 p.m. on AM 620 WSUN. Primitive humans perform tribal rituals before important events, like the harvest dance, the hunting chant, and, of course, the tailgate party. 
to Bennigan's tailgate party and kick off the football season. Now through September 18th, you and your touchdown tribe can feast from Bennigan's tailgate party menu. Featuring Bennigan's best sampler with buffalo wings, tomato skins, and fried cheese. Then tackle Bennigan's sizzling tailgate steak. Or a halftime chicken platter. Barbecued chicken, baked beans, and fresh coleslaw. Then add an ice cold beer. Bennigan's Tailgate Party. It's the best way to celebrate the football season since primitive man discovered the parking lot. Bennigan's food and fun for humans. Stop by Bennigan's on Fowler on Dale Mabry and one block north of Fletcher at the Village Center. My name's David. I'm an accountant. It's a great job. The only things I don't like are tax season and my health plan. I mean, I kick in all this money every month for a group plan that barely covers anything and has a high deductible. I'd rather have an individual plan, but they can be pricey too. If you're looking for a quality, affordable, individual health plan, you're not alone with Physicians Healthcare Plans. You get comprehensive group plan benefits without belonging to a group. With no deductibles, co-payments as low as $10, premiums as low as $60, and a vast network of the finest doctors and hospitals to choose from. Physicians Healthcare Plans. Plans. Individual coverage for people like David, for people like you. Hey, you don't have to be an accountant to recognize a good value. Find out why over 46,000 people have chosen Physicians Healthcare Plans. Call your independent agent or PHP today at 1-800-PHP-6449. Available in Pinellas, Hillsborough, and Pasco counties. <laughs> Weekday afternoons, join the Mad Dog. The Dean of Tampa Bay Talk Radio. Bob Lasseter on AM620 WSUN Entertaining Talk Radio. Capitol Records is proud to bring you the hottest pop sensation to go country. It's Elton John Boy. Hello, I'm Elton John Boy, and I invite you to enjoy my latest compilation hits, sung with my newfound friends, the Walton Family Singers, to benefit the short, middle-aged, somewhat pudgy gay musicians with hair transplants and gapping front teeth foundation. Oh my, we're going to sing all the classics. You'll get hits like Don't Let Your Son Go Down On Me. Don't let your son go down on me. Don't let your son go down on me. You'll get hits like Honky Cat. I want you to get back, Honky Cat. Living in the city really ain't where it's at. Hello? Pick up your copy of Elton John Boy's Walton Family Classics at a truck stop near you. Good night, everybody. Good night, Elton John Boy. In association with the Psychotic Friends Network. 2.21 the time. 21 minutes after the hour of 2 o'clock. Let's go to a Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at WSUN. Hello, Tampa. Tampa once. Tampa twice. Tampa... May you be locked in a room with Jeffy and Sharon for the rest of your life. <laughs> Should live so long. Well, let's go to St. Petersburg. Hi, St. You're on the air at WSUN. Hey, Bob and Sharon. Hi, hey. dude. Hey, I um, just want to let you know, I heard it this morning. Oh, so he was play. late, huh? Bennington yeah. was late after all. Yeah, he was. He didn't come on until about 10 or 6. Did I exaggerate? Mm, no. Did I tell the gospel truth? <laughs> it was the most hilarious thing I've heard in a long time. I'll tell you. If it you was probably have... the best half hour I've ever done, and nobody heard it. I was just you? Say, if you ever have a time when those calls are getting really crappy, you should just set it up and put that on for half an hour. It, it, it really is hilarious. I was laughing to myself out loud. It was great. <laughs> and everything that I said actually happened. Oh, I mean, the... ab absolutely. And the whole time you're sitting there just going, I just can't believe this. And you're talking about, I don't get paid for reruns and this and that. And it, was, it, it really was. It was just hilarious. Let's see, wasn't it needed? It aired. It, it did it air, yeah. to air, see for 20 there? minutes. I, I'd like to hear That's the last right. 10 minutes, but I didn't hear that. Uh, I don't think anything really uh, spectacular happened in the last 10 minutes. Uh, probably everything really worthwhile had, had happened uh, by the time that uh, they, they took it off this morning. Yeah. Hey, I heard you talk about it for the first time last week about uh, Bennington coming on early. Yeah. Uh, you probably knew it, but, you know, he's been doing that for about four months now. Doesn't make any difference to me. I don't care. Yeah, no, I didn't know if anybody knew it, but yeah, he comes on anytime between five thirty and quarter to six usually uh -huh. with that show. And um, I never heard you mention it before. I just didn't know if you knew it or not. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'd forgotten it because it doesn't really make any difference to me one way or the other. Right. right. I don't get paid for it. All right. Well, that's all I got, Bob. <laughs> okay, dude. Thanks. Take care. Five seven six W S U N of Ellis in Hillsboro two two one W S U N to a cell phone high cell you're on the air at W S U N. Hey Bob, how are you this afternoon? Doing great, man. Hey, listen, uh, I'm in a rental car today. And I, I use it yeah. every day, and I'm I very seldom ever call you. But uh, the rental car, the first thing I did when I got into this thing, of course, was to try to get me some good talk radio on there. And I hit the buttons, you know, the ones that are already preset, hoping somebody had already set six twenty in there. Yeah. And, uh, lo and behold, what do I hear but our favorite TJ screaming and yelling. No. And, I, whoa, this is good. Apparently, she got through to, uh, G. Gordon Liddy today. And the Again? Reason, listen, though, the reason that I'm calling, I'm very concerned about her help. because she was on her almost 30 minutes, and I, I, I've always sensed that she had a, a, a bit of calm and resolve left in her, but today she totally lost it. Was screaming, calling him Nazi, calling him all kinds of names. Ooh. And in, in the conclusion of the thing, when he finally had enough of her, uh, she was made, please don't cut me off, I'm going to try to say this with as much tact as I can, uh, making references to him uh, being, you know, sexually promiscuous with little animals. Huh. It was that bad. So, what I'd like to do, I'd like to put out a public call. Tamara Jean, TJ, if you're there, call. Let us know you didn't have the big one today. You really sounded like you were going to go off the deep end and do something crazy. Yeah, I think she better call in today and explain this. Let us know this, about yeah. this. We care about you. And how the heck could you get through that 1-800 number to a national show? That he's, that's beyond me. Well, it's real easy. He doesn't have any calls. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's but why I kept her for a half an hour. Okay? So, okay. Okay. If you're out there, let us know you made it through the call, okay? Okay. Thanks, dude. Thank you, Bobby. Take care. I hope she's all right. I'd, I'd miss her. She's kind of a staple around these parts, don't you think? <laughs> sure she is. Does she have a weather bulletin or something left over from you know, another day or something? Oh, okay, read? the latest on uh, Felix is that it's going to be stalled we don't care about Felix. off the North Carolina coast for a while, meaning the, uh, the cares? seaboard could be taking a beating. So? Eating away at the beaches. and Nobody lives there anyway. Winds. Only a handful of people live uh, vacation in the Outer there. Banks. It's no big deal. It is to them. It's going to tear them all up. Well, let them listen to their radio station and li listen to, you know, the sob sister closest, on that station. Uh, closest thing to weather, wring her hands about weather it. that I have. We have a lot of people from Florida who summer in North Carolina That's right. on the coast. Screw them if yeah. they leave here. So we have relatives that need to be forewarned of what's happening out there. What Screw about, them. About it's the a United States tragedy. The to hell with them. People that leave here during the summer are wimps. I didn't say that. I just said that we'd have people in North Carolina this summer there. Well, let's go to a lady in St. Petersburg. Hi, lady in St. Peter on the air at WSUN. Hello. Hello. Wouldn't you want them to care about us if it was happening to us? See? What good would it do us? I, just caring. Prayers. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, Love what I want to know is, could you possibly play that last half hour? Because I was sick and I missed it. I slept in. I don't know, Jeffy, do we have it? Yeah, we have it somewhere. Sure. If you, like, take out commercials and stuff, it'll be short, won't it? Probably the same commercials are scheduled to run today, anyway. Yeah, same ones. The traffic will be about the same. <laughs> right, it's just the, you know, just the weather bulletin won't be accurate. But don't play it in the 2 o'clock hour, because then it won't get played overnight. In no, you got to play it now. I don't want to wait listen four hours. Has, no. Jeffy, is it in there? Yeah, hold on. It'd have to be after, it would have to be after 3, so it would make it to the overnight reruns. Well, play it when I want to play it. Oh, <laughs> who, who made you boss? I see what it says on the top of the log. What? The Bob Lassiter Show. Hmm. We'll have to do something to fix that, too. Okay. Yeah. What do you... What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, madam, I'm afraid we can't play the last half of Bob. 576 WSUN and Pinellas Hills. What's going on? Huh? Where are you at? Unbelievable. 576 WSUN and Pinellas and Hillsboro 221 WSUN. Do you have the tape? Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, busy looking for it right now. Just busy as a what little bee. Do you want him to do it one time, Bobby? I just wanted to find the tape. Let's the play phone. it coming back out of the uh, two, uh, 2 30 hour. Well, then they'll play miss about it. 20 minutes of it. Uh, it probably, probably isn't worth going more than 20 minutes on, but we'll go to. Uh, uh, take it uh, from where we went off the air. Till uh, probably the traffic report, just to prove that you actually played the traffic report uh, in the uh, in the break around oh, uh, the quarter wait, hour. Wait, so wait, wait. About 15, 20 minutes max. Wait, give what? him a little build up. Play it in the next hour. No, play it now. You're such a pope. <laughs> 
I'm not going to hear it again tomorrow. I don't care. People I'll get to, to hear it. it tomorrow. I'll get to hear. I'll get to relive my my frustration. I'll get to relive my uh, my uh, just just sitting here saying. God, I always thought of myself as some kind of an asshole and a lunatic. I really <laughs> yeah. am the only sane person. I really am. No. It's 228. And now, coming to you live, it's another Ron and Ron replay. Fast Eddie talks about his problems with his online stalker. You know, she's deeper than she appears, man, because she is whacked. She's Sandra Bullock. No, she's no because she's worse than Bullock. She's like the people that were stalking Bullock in the net. Because who knows? One day I'm going to come home and find my whole furniture gone. She's probably got my credit card number. I think that's the Lucky least. You. That's, that's, that's the a, least of your worries. Well, that's going to be from lack of payment. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no gone. credit. I have a. Uh, I either have no credit. Is or, your credit you know, ruined because of her? My you know? my God! Someone stolen the wicker. <laughs> Be sure to listen to Ron Diaz and Ron Bennington each weekday morning only on the Ron and Ron Show. Don't miss Ron and Ron. Weekday morning, 6 till 10 a.m. on AM 620 WSUN. Entertaining talk radio. Welcome to the Professional Contractor Stock Report, brought to you by the Home Depot. Every stock expert will tell you, buy low. Well, Home Depot's got over 50,000 items in stock, and every one of them's at a guaranteed low price day in, day out. In fact, even if you get a so-called contractor's discount at other places, you still pay less at Home Depot. And that's on professional quality stock, like custom building products. You know, custom building products is the recognized leader in contractor quality tile installation products, interior and exterior patching products, and wall covering adhesive products. Plus, they're 100% made in America. Every Home Depot here in Tampa has the kind of services a pro like you can appreciate. Like fax ordering, job site delivery, and since trading starts at 6 a.m. every weekday, your money can go to work as early as you do. Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Just the beginning. Life is choices. They're everywhere. Sports car, minivan, paper or plastic, cat or dog, smoking or non. McDonald's understands the pressures of making these kinds of decisions. And frankly, you already have enough of them. So say hello to two quarter pounder with cheese sandwiches or two bacon, egg and cheese biscuits for just $2. It's the least we can do to make one thing in your life a lot easier to decide on. Now about your hair. Plus tax prices and participation may vary. Life is choices. They're everywhere. Sports car, minivan, paper or plastic, cat or dog, smoking or non. McDonald's understands the pressures of making these kinds of decisions. And frankly, you already have enough of them. So say hello to a 39-cent hamburger, a 49-cent cheeseburger, or two bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits for just $2. It's the least we can do to make one thing in your life a lot easier to decide on. Now about your hair. Plus tax prices and participation may vary. Get ready for Aaron Summers and Passion Foes tonight, 8 till midnight, on AM 620 WSUN. Entertaining talk radio. Okay, 231 is the time. So uh, let me set this up just uh, briefly here. Uh, Jeffy, what time actually did this start? Can you tell from the dat? At uh, 30 after. Okay. Well, I'm, go I'm doing the call that. Uh, when this guy was on the air, we're going that's to have when we found out we were off the air. Okay. Yeah, that's when we knew we were off the air. So if you were listening to this radio that's station at 5 about 5.30 yesterday afternoon, you know that there was a very severe storm in the area. Uh, our lightning rod, otherwise known as our tower, sits out on the end of Gandhi Boulevard uh, in old Tampa Bay, and it apparently took a lightning hit and knocked us off the air for about 45 minutes. But in any event, um, I personally have no way of knowing if we are on or off the air because uh, I, you know, I'm not in the control room where the dials and meters are, and I do not listen uh, off the air. I listen. It's, it's, it's a long story. Just take my word for it. I personally have no way of knowing one way or the other. So if you were listening and suddenly your radio went dead, don't think the show ended. No, 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 no. Not by any stretch of the imagination. This is what actually happened. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at WSUN. Is this me? I would imagine so. Uh, how's it going? Uh, fine, thank you. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Great. And I just thought I would call to let you know, um, I was probably two weeks ago or nah, maybe even longer, um, Gary, Gary Spivey predicted that the uh, 
last storm that came through yeah. was supposed to hit Cape Hatteras. Remember? Uh, no, I thought he said Daytona. Daytona. Oh, was it Daytona? Yeah. I could have swore it was Cape Hatteras. No. Okay, the one well, before that was, though, I think. Was it? Yes, it was. Well, it was one of them, then. Cool. Ah, oh, see? Okay, he, he's well, a real psychic. See? I was just calling to let you know that this one is going to hit Cape Hatteras. So, <laughs> I didn't know if he predicted I thought it was that, so... Just calling to let you know. Okay. Froggy. Take care. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's Spivey. It was just off a storm. Man, that's Spivey. He knows everything. We're going to get stormed on, He's Bobby. a charlatan. <laughs> We're going to get Cape Hatteras gets right hit at least now. once a year by some kind of a major storm. I'm not a giant hurricane, though. And this one's a big one. Over 2,000 ships have sunk off Cape Hatteras because it's a, it's, it's a cauldron. It's a bubbling cauldron of storms. 2,000 ships? Yes! Really? Where'd you get that from? I made it up, Sharon. Did you? I thought so. So who's going to go get the umbrellas, you or me? Who's going to go? Come on. Let's go to uh, Bradenton. Hi, Bradenton. You're on the air at so WSUN. My new Hello, shoes. Hey, Bradenton. Okay, I'll be the one. You were right. You were right. You were oh, oh, so right. That's right. That was. The driver's name was Nazir. That's right. Nazir? Nazir. Nazir. As in Brazier. God. Three of you yelling at me at once? Well, Sharon, you just, you know, apply oh, you know, apply a little thinking processes before you open up your yap. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know Nazir was a character. Well, you know. All we ever talk about is Ahmood. Well, listen to the bits next time. Don't listen to Jesse and, and Bob gabbing at each other. I'm busy reading during the bits. I'm busy yeah. reading. Yeah, busy Cosmo. reading people from Metro. New York. Yeah. I know. Mystery Magazine man has been yeah, a little well, lax lately. I haven't seen it. Sorry, him. we could... We, Oh, forget it. You have a good day, Lasseter. <laughs> Take care, dude. <laughs> it's always See, Sharon has the story over there from. Uh, sometimes. Sharon has the story from the Associated Press about a uh, mag oh, the magazine about a um, the mosquito, mosquito cook off, and oh, she God. says to me during one of the breaks about, oh, the, I have to you know uh, make uh, some of these up and invite you over for dinner. And so I look at her and say, you know, I'm sorry, Sharon, but I don't think uh, you know mosquitoes come in a can. And the woman was devastated. No, I wasn't. I said we'd set up the bug zapper outside and catch our own. <laughs> How are you doing with that miracle fall, Sharon? Fine, thank you. What are you using it, it now for? Right, a plant it, stand or something? No, it still works quite well. Yeah, not it as well as the frying pan. It doesn't wear out is the magical part about it. You can use it forever. But <laughs> since you brought up this mosquito cook-off, looking for food oh, with Jesus. a little more bite, well, muscadine mint mosquito jelly might be right up your alley. It's a light wine-colored gelatin speckled with brown and black toasted mosquito parts, and it beat out mosquito supreme pizza and mosquito brittle at this year's annual world championship cook-off. Wait, wait a second. Crowley's wait a Arkansas. second. The bean counter standing out in the hall making you know, uh, cuts across his uh, right. throat with his finger signs. What, what in the hell does that mean? Off the air. We are? Off the air. Oh, well, hell, we'll just carry on anyway. It doesn't matter to us. Okay. There's two people well, wait on a second. hold. If we're off talk the to air, us. why are you standing out in the hall, uh, you know, without talking, but making sign languages to me? Because I don't know what the official procedure is, and I would never... Well, if we're off the air... <laughs> he could probably say all kinds of bad words, and nobody would even know. Moment, really, and then you would, like, not we could be back on in a moment. Well, if we came back on as you see, were saying Darren, that we were off, then people would know that you were wrong. See, see, but technically we can't stop because Darren needs this, wouldn't he? And the hell they need, with Darren. And, well, no, wait a minute. And they need this for the reruns on the weekend. See? Well, then Darren better call in. No. To whom? To me. They'll wake you up so you can do a little bit live. No, you should the, call in now in. so we'll have... If we need the... Because first, look, well, look what time it is. What? Bennington's going to be, uh, you know... Uh, That's right. right. He just turns However, on the microphone as he's walking around fixing his coffee because he thinks this is great radio in the morning. But so also, we don't need this for Darren. No, no, but we need this for the weekend reruns, Unless Bobby. Bennington's late. So I have to sit here and talk while I'm off the air yeah. to fill up tape space in case Bennington's late. No, for the day that it runs over on the weekend. Nobody this, listens to it anyway. Well, it's got to have something that runs... Why can't they just it insert some just Dr. Laura? Dead dead air. This is a perfect time for me to do my mosquito cook-off story anyway. Well, if we're right? off the air, yeah, it is so. a perfect time for you I to do. I think so. Okay. Anyway, one of the judges in this world championship cook-off... Except cook -off, now we've got people calling on Sunday telling the board operator, <laughs> you tell him he's not off the air, I'm listening to him right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got him on Sunday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
point. Jesus. I'm glad we didn't say any really naughty words. This, or you anything. see, all this tape replay stuff, this is all so confusing. Okay, 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 okay. I didn't get to the end part. This is really the best part. One of the judges in the Mosquito Cook-Off in Crowley's Ridge, Arkansas, was an 11-year-old boy, says the jelly mint taste was the best. It made him forget the mosquito parts. And this was started three years ago. The only rules are that everything has to be baked at 325 or higher for 20 minutes or more. I don't get paid for the, the reruns. And the other recipes... This year included... I don't care if they've got tape for the reruns. I don't get paid for them. Okay, the other... The other... The la, the Neither other do two. you. Gosh, I'm lucky <laughs> if I get paid for what I'm on here for, much less the re-stinking runs. Hold on a minute. I'm on the last Well, considering line. the quality of your stories, I'd have to say no, you're no, correct. No, no. no the... Probably the only the, thing you've said all day that I agree with. <laughs> the runners up... I'm lucky to get paid for this crap. <laughs> the runners up in the mosquito cook-off include the raisin spice mosquito bars... The mosquito burrito and my personal favorite, marinated skeeter kebab. I mean, there are four <laughs> shut-ins that listen to this goddamn radio station on Sunday. I've got to sit here in a horrendous I rainstorm that so that there'll be something on tape for them to listen to on Sunday yep. because they don't have lives. Yep. We can... <laughs> So what do you think? You want to run down and get our umbrellas? Or oh, look at it's raining now. It's too late. Damn it! Bobby. I want to go home. We're not on the air. Well, how long are we going to be off the air? I don't know how long we're going to be off the air. Oh man, look at old poor old Shannon with her hair pulled back like that. Shannon Faulkner. Oh, did she Jesus. end up going to school today? Later on. Thanks, what Andy. a what a ridiculous story! Ooh. Why in God's name is anybody covering this story? I mean, with, wow. here's this woman that has no business being where she's at at a school that has no business being open. Bobby, what? This is the part where we're not on the air, but maybe in case somebody's listening on the telephone, those two people on hold, they can probably still hear us. What? I'm going to blow severe? good callers, uh, no. you know, when we're not on the air. No, the, keep we them on. We can come it. back at any time. Severe thunderstorm warnings are in effect for Hillsborough, Polk, and Citrus counties. In fact, in Citrus County, a roof was blown off of the house. But we're not on the, the air. Well, we might be soon. Trees have been well, blown down. Well, why don't down. you read it while we're on the air? Wind gusts. I can look out Blinder. the goddamn window and see it's raining. <laughs> I don't need something from the Associated Wind Press gusts. to tell me it's raining. Wind gusts of 60 miles per hour in South Lakeland. See, we could save this tape for an air check. You never know when we might need one someday. I've been in this someday. business for 25 years. I have never been in Help. such a ridiculous position in my entire life. <laughs> but I'm sitting here talking to no one in case Bennington's late tomorrow. You're talking to me, Bob. I love you. Kissy, kissy. And you're anyway. sitting there reading a weather bulletin to no one. <laughs> the fellows down the hall and might they rushed it. it into you. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's the best part. Here, here, go on the air with us right away. Oh, People God. need to know. And, uh, oh, residents of West Central Florida should seek safe shelter as these thunderstorms approach. Okay, so now we've done our duty, our civil duty. To inform people. This is crazy. Anything else? What if they're taking the boat out tonight? Oh God! Guess what? This is uh the Scott Robbins cruise night. Who <laughs> cares? <laughs> he works with Kara Bauer the in the coast. morning. He looks forward to these Tuesday night cruises. The only peace the man gets in his oh. life. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! So how do we find out if we're still off or not? Are we still off? Huh? Well, what you could We're do is you could off? look across the room uh, into the other yeah. glass, and you can see Jeffy sitting there talking on the phone to an engineer, frantically pushing buttons. Bobby. The on-air light is on. It must mean that we're going somewhere. <laughs> oh, my God. Why don't you play, uh, play, uh, play the A-hole song. Da -da -da play the A-hole song? Yeah, my mother doesn't like it when I say the whole Your word. mother can't hear us. We're She'll, not on the air. She could hear it on the rerun, okay? What, is she one of the four shut-ins on the weekend that listens? Of course, Mommy always listens. Mommy always listens. She even listens to my chat with Sharon on Sunday mornings. Um, she listens to the reruns of the show. She always listens. She's a very faithful listener. This is crazy. This is absolutely play, insane. Play a little music. Fill some time. Play, uh, play, uh, where, where is that? Da -da -da -da. Oh, God, that's good for four or five minutes. And then it'll be time for a break anyway. Play da 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 da. Wait, the asshole song. You know that. The what? I can't hear you. Speak up. You know what I'm talking about. What? I don't like to say... What don't you like to say? That word. It what word? It upsets mommy, all right? She can't hear you. God, the asshole song, okay? Just play it. The asshole? Did you say the asshole mm. song? Suppose your mother's listening. I know. Just play it. Play it, and it'll eat up some time. Can't you find it real fast? 
Let's find something real fast. Play. We won't have to be sitting here flapping our gums, and I can go. Uh, oh no, I'm tinkle. kind of enjoying this. I can go tinkle. I'm enjoying the irony, irony of having to sit here to fill up tape. <laughs> <laughs> that might or might not be run. You get paid either way. 20 whether minutes we're, to 6 tomorrow morning. Whether we're on the air or not, right? Hey, Bob, the tape machine just went down. And then on top of that, <laughs> Ross comes in and talks on the microphone. I've got one asshole standing out in the hall making sign language because he doesn't want to, you know, be heard on the air, trying to tell me I'm not on the air. I got Ross that comes into the room and bends over to talk into a microphone. <sighs> So. I work with lunatics. <laughs> that's that's for the tapes for later. It's a good thing that he talked into the microphone. That way it can be heard later when we're... The tape is playing later. Right? right. The tape won't be playing later because it Bennington will, be. will probably be on time. But on Sunday it will. Over Sometime over the weekend it will. Nobody listens on Sunday. God, they've got to have something to Except your in. mother. Okay, well that's enough. Oh, um, I have to sit here and fill a half an hour... Talking to myself because your mother might listen on Sunday. That's and on point. top of that, yep. I've got callers here. Let's see what these Let's callers take, want. I know call. that these people are going to call up and tell me I'm off the air. Hi, you're on the air at WSUN if we were on the air. Hey, Bob. Yeah. We're in cyberspace. How are you doing? <clears throat> what do you mean we're in cyberspace, sir? Uh, turn that million watt mother back on. You mean we're off? <sighs> yes, it does, asshole. 576-WSUN in Pinellas and Hillsboro, 221-WSUN. <laughs> For the benefit of those of you who can't hear us since we're not on the air, he asked if the dump button still worked. Yeah, in a, in a Yes, it wasn't hit by lightning. <laughs> Report when we're off the air. That... <laughs> <laughs> now, let me see if I understand this. There's a couple cell phones on hold. That will be That's covered. Right. Though they will cover this traffic report if the show ever runs on tape. They'll play something over the traffic report so it can't be heard. And you want to run it. Correct. Of course. Be a sport, Bobby. Hit the stinking traffic report. Doesn't anybody... Is there anyone here playing with a full deck? I don't think so because I just got disconnected from an engineer. Well, at least something good happened in your day. Where's Peter, Bob? I don't know where Peter is. Why would I know where Peter is? He's one of those, you know, he's never, he's here when you don't need him, and he's never here when, you know, there would be some help. I don't think he knows What how possible help on. could he be? Good point. What, like the bean counter out in the hall? <laughs> Look at him, he's laughing. Off the air. Off the air. <laughs> what? You're off the air. <laughs> what? I can't hear what you're saying. You're off the air. I don't want to be heard on the air. Oh, Well, we didn't God know until he told us. We didn't know till he told us, and my, my really very good mosquito story is wasted. Two people on hold heard it, but that was it. it seemed to amuse the fellows in the hall, but that was all. <laughs> I'm going to go home and drink. I'm going to go home and drink tonight. That's what I'm oh. going to do. Do that every day. Can't do it in the backyard tonight. And then you read a weather bulletin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then if I'm also not mistaken... <laughs> will be covered during the tape replay. It so it's will? not to... Well, of course it's not... No, they don't. They just let Three days go. later, three days later, they shouldn't be yeah. alarming the populace with 60 mile an hour winds headed your way. They the end of the world go. is coming. Yeah, I think they let those go. They let them go. Yeah. Jeffy's nodding yes. He's right. And so am I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's see. We don't, want, we don't want to confuse the audience by telling them the traffic is heavy on 275. No. no. Which it is all the time anyway. But it's okay to tell them that 7,500 mile an hour winds have just blown away the pier in St. Petersburg. <laughs> and uh, that, uh, you know, if you have a shovel, you should dig a hole and climb into it. We'll run that a week later. That's right. The pier got blown down? Wow. How did you know that? God. Bob. It's 546. <sighs> so that's what you missed yesterday. Oh, that was fun. <clears throat> Life went on, more or less. It's 2.48. You never know what's going to happen on Hooters on the radio. Hello? Okay, what's the scoop? Richard Gere is definitely living with a man. Allegedly. Allegedly. How do you know? Allegedly, definitely. Um, he has dined and partied with 
people that, that uh, we are friends with. Okay, now, when he's dining with this man, are they intimate? Um, well, I wouldn't go as far as uh, kissing or, or fondling, but yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. The gestures, the, uh, you know, the way like the gerbil run around the table. <laughs> play with it. Uh, maybe a little foreplay, a uh, gerbil. <laughs> I'll come here. Hey, kitty. So you always have to listen. Hooters on the radio, weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. On AM 620, WSUN. Don't got a car. You can't get too far. Cam Alexis. All right, she uses it wrong, but she uses it. Hermer it, not to be taken internally. 2.52 the time. You see, uh, Jeffy, you're not the only one with the uh, problem, honey. Don't worry about it, okay? Uh, let's go to uh, Y Mama. Hi, Y. You're on the air at WSUN. Hello, this is Y Mama. Yeah? This is me. Uh, Mr. Lasser, this is the first time call. Oh, great. I want a little horn thing. <laughs> cool. So what's eating you, man? <laughs> Assholes yeah. like you. Oh. Let's go to Clearwater. Hi, Clear. You're on the air at WSUN. Hi, Bob. Hi. That was, without a doubt, some of the greatest radio in the history of broadcast. No, sir. It was some of the greatest non-radio. Well. It's only because we played it today that it became great radio. But while it was happening, it was non-radio. Well, that's true. But the fact that we did get to hear it today, really, I, I, it, it's something that... that uh, I uh, I hope people recorded because it was it was absolutely fantastic. That should be put in archives. Yes, it should. It, it should be put in some type of a time capsule. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it, Sharon's blonde, is she? Uh, yes, and she uh, was yesterday well, too. Who makes you say that? Oh, nothing, Sharon. Nothing. I just yeah, it's better. Yeah, Jeffy was a little blonde yesterday too. Come to think of it. Uh huh. Matter of fact, this place was full of blondes yesterday. Oh, we have hair. I got that impression. There was a lot of blondes there yesterday. Yes. <laughs> and and Bob. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. Okay, dude. <laughs> Thanks. <Frog. laughs> Let's go to a lady in St. Petersburg. Hi, lady in St. Peter on the air at WSUN. Oh, that was hilarious. I'm oh, glad you enjoyed I it. I listened to that yesterday, and I shut off the radio and went on with my business. I heard it this morning and chuckled, but I got a big charge out of it just now. That was hilarious. What would Sharon do in a blizzard, I wonder? I, I don't know. Oh, we have to have God all forbid it would ever Probably pass out her. suntan lotion. Yeah, she took <laughs> care of every little thing before, <laughs> before she would go. Go on. That's just, it's well, she'd been trying to get rid of that mosquito <sighs> story for three days. I've been hanging know? on to it, waiting to use it. <laughs> it was a riot. It was a riot. Thanks, Bob. You're quite welcome. Bye. 576 WSUN in Van Ellis and Hillsboro, 221 WSUN. And, of course, toll-free, 1-800-356-WSUN. Notice, I was the professional not once did I give out the phone numbers while we were off the air. You almost did. Did not. Did. Let's go to a lady in Dunedin. Hi, lady in Dunedin. You're on the air at WSUN. Hi, Bob. Hi. I have a story to share with you that I find I think uh, only you can appreciate. Okay. I was in a store with my husband the other day. Yeah. And uh, I found myself on the squeak toy aisle. Mm-hmm. And I found myself going up and down the aisle, squeezing all the squeak toys. Oh, it's hard to find a good manly None squeak toy. None of them toys. were good, and they were all from China. Yeah. And here I am squeezing the squeak toys, calling it a commie squeak toy, and, and <laughs> putting it back. I don't have a dog. I have no reason to be doing this whatsoever. Well, no, you see, the problem is the good squeak toy is the commie squeak toy. The American-made squeak toys are the wimpy ones. But these were bad. They were bad squeak toys. Well, they're the American-made ones. But they said made in China on the bottom. Oh, really? Yeah, I had. I, I was looking at them, Bob. Uh, probably some unscrupulous American manufacturer stamped that on there in the hopes of deceiving the public still even further. They were probably made in Hoboken. Something was up with it because, and on top of that, they were shaped like fruit. Yeah. And I'd heard the ones that were shaped like fruit were good ones. Yeah, that's the one that I have. This one's a strawberry. Yeah, well, they had pears and stuff like that, too, and, and none of them were good ones. Oh. But I just, when my husband came up to me, he's like, what are you doing? I realized I was listening to too much talk radio then. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to share Did that. you let him smell it? <laughs> no, he kind of dragged me away from there. No. Oh. We're going home, honey. No. Anyway, I did want to share that because I figured you'd appreciate it. Well, I do. I, you know, don't know what got into me, but I spent a good amount of time squeezing the squeak toys. Still haven't found a good one. Keep looking. Thanks. Okay. Take care. 576 WSUN in Pinellas and Hillsboro, 221 WSUN. By the way, I don't normally do this. These people don't advertise here, but there's an absolutely fascinating article in Tampa Bay Magazine. It's a profile of uh, Brian and Joel Glazier. 
Oh. Yes, uh, and uh, tells you a lot about the uh, two young men. Uh, of course, Malcolm's uh, sons who will be running the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess I had them kind of pegged wrong. I think a lot of people probably had them uh, pegged wrong. You know, uh, sons of a rich man thought that they had led uh, lives with uh, silver spoons in their mouths and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. Nope. I mean, as an example, when I got out of college, probably would have thought that dad would have given them glamorous, high-paying jobs and, you know, one of his uh, firms or, you know, got one of his other rich friends to give them glamorous, high-paying jobs. No way. Brian was assigned to one of uh, Malcolm's trailer parks where he was uh, uh, forced to uh, peek into windows, uh, taking an inventory of kids and dogs. And Joel actually had to go and knock on the door and collect the uh, $3 for a kid or $5 for a dog. Boy. That's the way they started out. So they're just, you know, real people like you and me. That's tough. I would have, mm -hmm. You know, millionaires' kids. And yeah, I wouldn't. Sit on the board of something. And yeah. Uh, no, but, uh, no, Brian had to go ahead and peek in the windows and count uh, kids and dogs. And Joel was the one who actually had a... Give me your three dollars! You got a kid in there, give me three dollars! I'll be back next month for three more. Jeffy used to be a trailer. Wait a second, lady, aren't you pregnant? Hot damned! Is it twins? Shoot! It's 2.58. Get ready for Aaron Summers and Passion Phones tonight, 8 till midnight, on AM 620 WSUN, entertaining talk radio. Today we're here in the blistering heat of Sun Rebel Stadium with some real diehard fans. Excuse me, sir, can you tell me what makes you such a diehard fan? The diehard heat handler. It's been designed with a special defense to withstand the hot weather. What? Well, contrary to popular belief, it's the heat, not the cold, that kills your car battery. You mean all this is about a car battery? Hey, this ain't just a car battery, pal. It's the Sears diehard heat handler. <laughs> I see. So you're not really sports fans. Nah, we just like knowing our cars will still start after being out in that hot parking lot all day. Uh-huh. And if you don't mind me asking, why the car battery fastened to your head? Oh, that. Yeah, well, that's just to remind everybody to think ahead, wow. you know, so they don't get stranded. Ah, well, there you have it, folks. Some real diehard fans. Sears diehard heat handler fans, to be exact. <laughs> So, fellas, any plans uh, after the game? Oh, yeah. There's this great action-adventure flick out. Don't tell me. You guessed it. You know, there's help with this sort of thing. <laughs> AM 620 WSUN. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of the advertisers, management, or staff of AM 620 WSUN. Entertaining talk radio. Deep in the heart of the convenience store cooler, the bottles talk about what's hot, what's cool, and the importance of exercise. Hey, Zebby. Yes, Zebby? What you doing lifting those bottle caps? Yeah, I'm working out. How come? Uh, making myself big like those very fine chillers. Very fine chillers are 20 ounces. Think you can get that big, Zebby? Yep. And when I am, people will chug me right down just like they do very fine chillers. Yeah, but very fine chillers are also light, crisp, and incredibly refreshing. Impending fatherhood, send your future up in flames. One minute after the hour, three o'clock. Welcome back, Fun Seekers. Hour number two, a Wednesday, August the uh, 16th, 1995. I, the magnificent Lassiter, assisted by you now know who. What kind of a message was that to send? I'd like to know. Home pregnancy alert. So anyway, I went home last night and, uh... Within, oh, probably about a half hour of, of my arrival home, Muffy was giving me kisses and hugs and rubbing my back and asking if I wanted anything special for supper. She does that every time I fine-tune my air conditioning system, which I do about three or four times a week. It's one of the great joys that I get in life, uh, cleaning the filter, calibrating the thermostat, checking the Freon levels, things of that nature, which, of course, I am able to do because I built my very own air conditioning system. It's uh, just a little a hobby of mine. I like to build air conditioners uh, from scratch. And uh, and uh, service them. Uh, and the reason I, I like to service my own air conditioning system is because it keeps it running longer and more efficiently, which uh, gives me great pride and makes my wife very, very happy. Uh, but unfortunately, very few of us actually know how to build our own air conditioning systems or how to maintain them, which is somewhat of a drag because most of us don't get kisses and hugs and back rubs and special meals every night, do we? Huh. Hey, it's not my fault, fella. You don't know how to do it. But perhaps there is another way around it where you might uh, get uh, kisses and hugs and uh, back rubs and special meals as well as get far better performance and a longer lasting air conditioning unit. So if you're some type of a klutz unlike me, you might consider calling Airdex Air Conditioning. Airdex Air Conditioning, Tampa Bay's leading service specialist, now one of the man's top ten dealers in the U.S., 
offer, and the man, of course, offering the highest quality in manufacturing with a 10-year parts and labor warranty. But Airdex not only replaces your AC equipment, they offer preventive maintenance. You know, like I said, in case you're a klutz and can't do it uh, like me. Uh, residential or commercial, doesn't make any difference to them. So if you're a homeowner or a business owner, call Airdex today for preventive maintenance. They'll combine to all the things that I can do myself. So uh, call Airdex at 522-7247 or 1-800-5-AIRDEX. Boy, that was a great background I got last night. Uh, to get your AC system checked out. And remember, if you need to replace it, they offer zero down, zero interest, and zero payments for 12 months. Call today, 522-7247 or 1-800-5-AIRDEX. You didn't do that. I don't want to talk about it. Then build your own air conditioner. You couldn't even figure out how to keep cleaning, lady, from messing with the thermostat. Shut up. You had to Shut get up. a special thermostat. I had to have my wife install it, too. <laughs> See, now we're talking this. Now I can't figure out how to use the damn thing. <laughs> if it gets too cold in there, I have to go and breathe on it to shut it off. It's a good thing there is air, Dex. You'd be in deep trouble. Stand there in front of my thermostat going, <gasps> You end up sitting with a block of ice in front of a fan. Unbelievable. 576-WSUN in Pinellas, Hillsboro, 221-WSUN. Uh, so of course, toll-free, 1-800-356-WSUN. So you didn't read the front page section of the trip, did you? Yes, I did read the front page, but I don't read all the stupid it was, stories. It's chock full of interesting, weird things today. <sighs> like what, Sherry? Okay, like I said, where were the children whose teeth are disintegrating? I don't care! In the Ukraine, in Kiev, Ukraine, for some reason, children's Jesus. children's teeth it's are just starting to sound like that golf show on the weekend where they do nope. trivia. Nope. It says dentists are alarms and say they've never seen anything like it. But their teeth, all the kids' teeth in this town, ten miles north of Kiev, are just disintegrating, falling out, falling apart. <gasps> so is the nuclear waste in the town. Nuclear. What yeah, that too. And what else? Oh, there's phony, uh, there's phony uh, shampoo on the market. Did you see that one? God. Head and shoulders? I don't use head and shoulders. I don't well, like some people do. That's the, that's the bad part, see? I mean, well, they wash enough. their hair more often with normal shampoo, and they wouldn't have to buy the expensive head and shoulder that's, stuff, and no, then possibly buy the true. ripoff. It's bad enough if you have dandruff, but to have dandruff and also worry about falling victim to counterfeit head and shoulder shampoo. Look at this whole half-page ad. Your teeth fall out? Look at this. They put a whole half-page ad, genuine and fake. You can tell the genuine because that's little, got that little triangular-shaped recycling symbol on the bottom. The Why would doesn't. anybody in his right mind go to the trouble and expense of counterfeiting head and shoulder shampoo so that they might, know. you know, make uh, 25 or 30 cents uh, a bottle? I mean, how much of the crap could you possibly sell to make it worth your while? I don't know. We were wondering. We were wondering about that. It's morning over at the other building. <sighs> how you can manage to get fake shampoo in. Because wouldn't you have a regular distributor? Of course you would. How do they get this stuff so, into the Sherry. How do they get this stuff into the stores? I don't know, Sherry. Well, well, the, the warehouse back door. would purchase it. Uh, yeah, that's right, Jeffy would know because he used to, of course, yeah, manage Jeffy the grocery store. Yeah, uh, Jeffy manager warehouse. How could they? How could they get fake shampoo yeah. in there, Jeffy? It would just. It would just. Probably some it. unscrupulous grocery store manager cut a deal with him. You know? That and that is very possible. That is very, very possible, but uh, more than likely some unscrupulous warehouse dealer cut a deal with them to unload the truck in the warehouse and just distribute it to the different stores. And it looks just like the real bottle. There you go. It's the tricky thing. I, mean, I think I would rather Same snatch logo, purses, uh, you know, than uh, go to all the trouble of making up phony baloney uh, shampoo and uh, trying to cut deals with unscrupulous warehouse managers. I had no idea this was and such a big problem. And hire trucks and, you know, oh, Jesus. Have to have molds made, and I, I, it's, it's ridiculous. The investment is absurd. There's nobody out there counterfeiting head and shoulder shampoo. Somebody is. Look at no, this. No, somebody is not. Why Sharon, you've they, been sucked in. Why would they go to the trouble to place a huge ad Sharon, in the newspaper? Sharon, just think about the actual cash investment. You would, you would, first of all, you would have to have the bottles manufactured, mm -hmm. which means somebody would have to cut a mold, which is very, very expensive, and then have the extruding equipment make the bottles. Uh, then you've got to have the labels printed up. Uh, then you've got to have some shampoo someplace to put in the damn things. Then you've got to have people going out there and trying to sell it. Look at this. Procter and Gamble placed this I big ad. I don't care that there's a big ad in there. I'm telling you it's a phony baloney story. It would, co it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash up front. 
for something that would take months or years to break even. And if you got caught, you're going to spend the rest of your miserable life in jail. This, no, this is, this is not think, true. I think we should call this 800 number. If you believe you have counterfeit shampoo, please call 1-800-blah-blah-blah for a free replacement. Mm -hmm. For I've a free fake. replacement. I've got fake shampoo. Do no, you? Sharon. They put that ad in the paper in the hopes that some uh, <clears throat> girl in the afternoon on the radio show mm -mm. would bring it up. Nope. So that they would they would get free publicity with people uh, standing there talking about head and shoulder shampoo. Otherwise, then on top of that, mm -hmm. they're hoping that people go into a grocery store or a drugstore and mindlessly walk past the head and shoulder shampoo, pick it up to see if it's the uh, counterfeit kind, and maybe just drop it in their basket since they have it in their hands anyway. Mm -mm. They would have put advertisement at the top if that were the case. It is an advertisement. It's not an advertisement. It is to an advertisement. No, this is some damage control of some sort. <sighs> It's an advertisement paid for by Procter & Gamble, the makers of Head & Shoulder Shampoo. Mm -hmm. It is not a news story, Sharon. And it doesn't look like a news mm -hmm. story. I didn't say it was a news story. It is an ad placed by Head & Shoulders, but it is not an ad for the shampoo. Oh, it's an ad to be God. wary of counterfeit, of fake shampoo. That and 40 stores... Well, anybody that could be suckered into buying, you know, a miracle fall, uh, I guess could be suckered into believing that this was a real uh, situation here. Also, 40 storks were, sadly enough, electrocuted in uh, Romania, in Bucharest. See, well, you, you can read a newspaper and miss all this stuff. I read a newspaper, and I immediately see all these little things like this. Yeah, and I have four new gray hairs wearing over the counterfeit mm -hmm. head and shoulder shampoo that doesn't counterfeit. That and a terrible story of uh, some daddy in Wisconsin who was with a hay baler or something out in the tall grass baling hay with his big tractor mower thing. Unfortunately, he did not see Was that a call on the... Uh, two small sons. On the authenticity of the head and shoulders of uh, counterfeit shampoo story, Jeff? Hiding in the high grass. Yes, it was. See? He didn't want to go on the air, though, did no. they? No, he did not. Yeah, another asshole ah. that was sucked in on it. What did he no, have to say see? about it? You tell Bob, that's a true story. Well, I saw it in the newspaper. <laughs> anyway. Right? Huh? Huh? No, no, this guy was saying uh, something other than that. He was saying that uh, um, it... Uh, it's another company that found empty bottles and empty labels. And they put their shampoo in the bottles with the labels. And so that for half the for you know half the investment they've made a bunch of money. No, they couldn't do it because the bottles the bottles themselves are what are what is different. It's the bottom of the bottles. The fake bottles don't have the recycling symbol on them. The this is do. nothing more than a ploy to get people to go out and pick up off the shelf a bottle of head and shoulder shampoo, tilt it up to look at the bottom, and then hopefully... Put it I'm in sure that, Exactly. I'm sure that they have done some research on this. Yeah. Yep. And someone has said 9 million people will pick it up and look at it, and 0.73% of those yep. will actually buy it. There you go. And so they sat down and said, well, let's see, the cost of the newspaper ads would be ta 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 We'll make X number of dollars. Let's do it. Let's do it. I used to work, I I used so. to work for a guy that would put... Uh, if we'd have we'd have uh, uh, different things on sale, and he would just walk by people's cart and put it in their cart. <gasps> and hey, some people would just take buy it, take it home. Oh, same thing. Oh, Jeffy, that's so dishonest. And you knew that no, and allowed most, it to continue. I mean, most of the people would go, "Oh, I, I didn't get this. Where did this come from?" But somebody would get it. Well, yes, oh, Jeffy, you see, oh. used to manage a caravan of gypsies yeah, prior to uh, coming into the radio business, and uh, that's uh, some of the stuff that he had his uh, his gypsies uh, doing. Why not? That? And did you read the Bay Life section? How oh, Anne Nicole Smith wanted to have the original funeral plans for her rich elderly husband. I am. How could you possibly? <laughs> you? How could you possibly <laughs> mistake me. me for BL? I am much heavier. My hair is dark, and I have a beard. I and BL just seems to be said, the only person in the entire goddamn country that gives a crap. I just thought it was amusing. <laughs> how Anne and Nicole. It was just the initials. <laughs> She wanted to take the coffin out to her ranch, set him up on the patio on the back deck, and the, uh, he says, I had to talk her out of it. I could just see him sliding into the swimming pool. I mean, no wonder I can't buy a call on this goddamn radio station about anything of any import to anybody because we have cultivated an audience of people that care about Anna Nicole Smith. Oh, lighten up. Have a good time. <laughs> Everybody else is. Join the party. Let's have a party, Bobby. Hey, did you see the new Alligator I'm talking, Express I'm today? I'm to a group of people who believe that vicious, evil criminals are out there uh, 
uh, counterfeiting head and shoulder shampoo, uh -huh. and uh, they're so uh, concerned about it that they've uh, tucked their uh, Miracle Falls under their arms and are heading out in droves as we speak to various different places that sell shampoo to check it out for themselves. Oh, that would be the Outer Banks because the hurricane's coming. Anyway, that was the uh, mortuary employee in Houston on Anna Nicole Smith's original idea for the funeral of her 90-year-old husband, the oil tycoon. I'm going to prop him up out on the back pool deck in his coffin. <laughs> So no, I'm sure it wouldn't be the service. first time she propped him up. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. that I, wonder, I, wonder he, I wonder if he had one of those inflatable things. <laughs> no, I think she used to do it with silly putty. Just <laughs> Get a big wad of silly putty. Those, and, you know, yeah. around some of the old men have them, uh, you know, the inflatable things. or whatever that was. No problem. Huh? What was that? Some of the old men have the, uh, you know, the hand inflatable things or the battery operated inflatables. Inflatable what? Problem, uh, they go forever. Never mind, Sharon. God. What, Jeffy? What are you talking about? Uh, coffin proper uppers. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord, help me. It's uh, 14 minutes after the hour of 3 o'clock. And now, here's another exciting offer from Video Treasure Chest. Just in time for Roy Scheider's birthday. Scheider starred in several different Jaws movies about a resort island police chief and his battle against man-eating great white sharks. But this final Jaws was never released, as this lost classic shows. Excuse me, are you Police Chief Martin Brody? Yes, who are you? Maury Bernstein. I'm an attorney. What can I do for you? Do you remember an incident involving a great white shark? You mean the one I killed? Yes, precisely. The one you killed. Yeah? Well, I've been retained by the family of that great white shark, Chief Brody. Huh? We're bringing a wrongful death suit against you. What? We'll be seeking $4 million in compensatory damages. Jesus, a lawsuit like that could cost me an arm and a leg. Is that a counteroffer, Chief Brody? What? I think my clients could be persuaded to settle for their pound of flesh, so to speak. I'll give you an arm and a buttock. Oh, Chief Brody, my clients are going to insist on at least half a torso for mental anguish. All right, half a torso, an arm, and a buttock. Listen, Chief Brody, I think if you came up with half a torso, two arms, and a buttock, we could settle this thing out of court. Done. I'm so glad. The Lost Jaws sequel entitled Everyone Out of the Water, There's a Lawyer on the Loose. Can be yours for just $19.95 in local video stores. Video Treasure Chest. We've got rooms of this crap. 19 minutes after the hour of 3 o'clock, so I'm being uh, more or less inundated. Perhaps I exaggerate a tad, but more or less inundated with off-the-air calls from people offering various different uh, scenarios and possibilities on the great head and shoulder shampoo uh, counterfeiting scheme. Well, yeah. well, you tell him Jeffy might have been the mafia. Could have been the mafia. You know, they do bad things all the time. You know, uh, they, uh, they bring in the heroin and stuff, and uh, it wouldn't be, uh, yeah, you tell them that. No, I don't want to go in the air. Or, uh, let's see, uh, possibly, uh, uh, it uh, could have been uh, one of their competitors. Yeah, yeah, the suave people. I think they're run by the mafia or something like that. I'm, I don't want to go on the air and say it, no. Now, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. There are at least four or five dozen issues out there that genuinely affect people's lives. We can go months in between getting a call on one of those, but we have people who are really, really thinking about and really concerned about yeah. the counterfeit head and shoulders shampoo scandal. Hey, that's something anybody can relate to. And then, of course, I come to find out that I work with people who spend a great deal of company time yep. sitting around the radio station today discussing this very issue instead of going out and selling commercials yep. or printing logs or fixing equipment. Think about how they things that they get paid to do. Smuggle it into the stores and distribute it. Get it right there on the shelves for a consumer to. Was anybody in management across. in on this discussion? Um, no. Well, yeah. Who? Not saying. Who? In your beeswax. I was talking to. Somebody. What do you mean, none of my beeswax? <laughs> I just hadn't been able to say that for a long time. It's none of those cracker expressions, you know, Bobby. Geez, don't you use that on uh, chat with Sharon on Sunday? It's hard to fit that in. By the way, what are we talking about this week on Chat with Sharon? Um, firearm safety. Firearm safety. Oh, are you for that or opposed to it? <laughs> I'm sorry, we just chat with Sharon. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffy. Stop it. <laughs> Tell us what's on the show. I just did. I haven't, uh... Yeah, but you haven't told us whether you're in favor of it or opposed well, to it. Well, now, what do you think? Of I course I'm in favor. I can't begin to imagine favor. the suspense is building. Of course building. I'm in favor of it. I don't blame it. you for not wanting to tell people to make them tune in on Sunday morning. Yeah, I'll find out for themselves, talk, huh? Talk about firearms. Talk about practicing and um, pros and cons of owning a firearm. Alternatives. Uh -huh. for, uh, for what were some of the cons yourself? of owning a firearm that came up on your show? 
The high cost of ammo. No, 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 no. Yeah, no that's, Jeffy, that's Jeffy, I was looking forward to the dead air. High I'm cost sorry. of ammunition is right. You see, you stepped on the dead air, Jeffy. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. what were some of the cons of owning a firearm? That would be people whose temperament might not be uh, quite suited for it. Uh, people who just are hot-headed. You mean like people, you. Who, people who wouldn't want to like fire you. at it? Just at anybody, at anybody that walked down the street. They shouldn't get a gun. Uh, you shouldn't be a gun owner. No. You shouldn't be. You wouldn't be right to have one. You'd be even-tempered and very safety-conscious. Right. should be an even-tempered person that believes in conspiracies for uh, dandruff shampoo. Those kind of people should have guns. Don't start, okay? Is that what you're telling me, Sharon? No. I think that's what you're saying. Anyway, that'll be 8 to 9. Should uh, Jeffy this, have a gun? Uh, weekend. Mm, no. No. <laughs> Why not? Well, you don't believe in, uh, you know, uh, conspir- uh, conspiratorial uh, dandruff shampoo theories. I sure do. Yes? Well, the world's then. going to hell, man. People, you can't even buy a decent bottle of shampoo these days. That's right. That's true. you got to worry about it being a phony. 576 WSUN in Pinella, Salisbury, 221 WSUN. Just look at the squeak toy controversy. You still use that foo-foo stuff? Seminole line, Seminole. You're on the air at WSUN. Hey, Bobby. How's it going? Oh, it's going great, dude. Listen, um, first off, i got to blow Sharon out the water. Okay. Uh, we, we've already heard uh, 530 to 6 o'clock if we were listening to the replay. So what's the point of playing it on the replay? You following? What? If you were listening last night to the replays, we already heard the last half hour. So if you wanted to play it, you know, between like 3 and 6 today, it'd be like a replay of a replay. Not necessarily. Well, okay, for the people who, like, didn't set their alarms or whatever for the last half hour or whatever, but I just catch the entire show on replays and occasionally listen to it during the daytime, so. But the 2 to 3 hour isn't replayed. Exactly, because they've already heard it last night. So is the rest of the show, for that matter. Well, yeah, so, I mean, you're just repeating the repeat. So? <laughs> well, I don't know. It was just uh, going along with Bobby's original theory at, uh, like, two Oh, o'clock. you're on his side. Talk to him, will you? I don't yeah, want to okay, talk to you. Bobby. Listen, um, th- there's already companies that are producing uh, imitation brands. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're like exact duplicates of uh, the products on the shelves, like Head & Shoulders, like Listerine, you know, Landers brand, um, Penchamp Company. They do nothing but produce uh, exact duplicates of what you've already got. So there's already companies out there that just takes people to switch the label. But generic, generic stuff. Yeah, like That's public. just like what is sold with the store label, I mean, with the uh, regular product label on it. Yeah, it's the exact, it's the exact same product. All they, all they have to do is switch the, switch the label on it. And boom, I mean, you can jack up the price double or even triple. But this had the regular head and shoulders label on it. That's exactly what he's saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All you have to do is switch the label on it. Yeah. Well, that's what the head and shoulders folks are upset about. Well, I can understand it. I mean, because you're losing, you know, a good bit of money on it. People are buying the duplicate. And they say it's an inferior product. Well, they're claiming it, but I mean, how can you really tell? They say it leaves more oil on your hair or whatever. You have a better chance of getting dandruff, but, uh... It's, it's exactly the same product. I used to work for a company that uh, would price one product, you know, like three times as high. And then our house brand, which was made by Lenders Company or uh, Penchamp, you know, would price that, say, like Head & Shoulders, we'd price it at $3 a bottle and would price our house brand at $0.99 cents a bottle. What are you going to buy? Ooh. And if you just switch the labels, you can, sell the, you can sell the house brand for $3 a bottle instead of the $0.99 cents and make a better profit. I buy a lot of generic stuff. Exactly. See, Bobby's totally out of the loop. You're sitting here with his head in his hand. He would never in his life walk into a grocery store and buy something generic. Well, Ever. Well, well, what's the point of paying the difference? It's the exact same product. See? I, mean, what's the, I agree. Sometimes there may be a special missing ingredient. You know, like, like what? KFC chicken. You just never know. <laughs> yeah, well, like the smell might be a little bit different or whatever, but you're never going to tell. Yeah. You're never going to tell from using it. Things like Vaseline, Colgate. What's the difference? Well, you know, i got to disagree. My grandfather used head and shoulders for years to get some of the yellow and some of the stain out of his white hair from the hard water. He's and dead head now, and shoulders, he? <laughs> he's long since dead, yeah. Yeah, yeah but doesn't his hair look nice? <laughs> <laughs> his hair looked excellent. Yes, See? it did. See there? Yeah. yeah, but did he ever try the generic brand? He's so cold and stiff and blue in there, but his hair's so <laughs> nice, <laughs> so lifelike. And I'm sure he wished he had an Anna Nicole Smith, too. <laughs> but, but did he ever try the generic brands? I don't believe so, no. He, I, if he if he did, he wasn't satisfied with it. 
You know, I mean, had he had it, he'd have found it's the exact same product, the exact same material, the exact same ingredients. You can't, you, you can't tell the difference. They might leave out, you know, a couple of the cosmetic items, like I said, the scent, you know, or like with the toothpaste. Exactly like yeah. I'm saying, the missing mm -hmm. ingredient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like it's nothing that a secret sauce, you know. That'll really affect the pro the product's performance generally. Like you go look look at the uh, the food section there in the canned goods section, you can get generic mushroom slices, stems and pieces, and for a lot less. What, what's the difference between generic and branded mushrooms? You know, any other products you get. What's the difference between yep. the two? Well, the vegetables are graded on a scale. Jeffy would know this. That's why they are graded on a scale. Yeah. But you, so, still, you so, still have to pass government standards, don't you? Yes, you do, but government standards are different for that scale. There's a higher grade, a lower grade, and a medium grade. Oh, so that the, mostly the low-priced company brands are the lower of the scales. So you're still getting peas that are okay, but they're not the top-grade peas. Yeah, that you would get in, say, a Del Monte. Not your top-of-the-line peas. If you boil all of them, you can't tell anyway, so... I mean, peas taste like mush. Oh, oh, I tend to disagree. Oh, no, 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 you gotta get those little tiny... Not you need to teensy little Lassure peas. <laughs> those little Lassure peas are the best. I've seen that they have a little... A new uh, line of uh, baby carrots, too. Baby carrots? Mm-hmm, in the can. I have to try those. And, and what's the brand by them? Are you, they're in that silver can, just like the... Uh, are you for harvesting carrots before they become adults? Or are you against harvesting carrots before they become adults? Is this like carrot adults? abortions or whatever? <laughs> no, they carve big carrots into little ones. That's how they get those. <laughs> <laughs> they they do. don't. That's what I hate. They I do. was reading a grocery store ad the other day, and it said, where do baby carrots come from? And I thought, well, that's dumb. <laughs> and then I read it. Says we just take the big carrots and carve them down into little ones. That's not. <laughs> that's what. It, that's what. Yeah. That uh -huh. was a uh, grocery store ad. Thanks for calling, Seminole. <laughs> Have a nice day. Okay. This <laughs> 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 is working out great, Bobby. And we well, thought we'd darn. never top that half hour yesterday. <laughs> I um. I want to talk to anybody that's left in the audience. That um. Hey, they're calling about shampoo. And they're calling about wanna, generic I brands. I want to talk to anyone in the audience that's left that might be playing with a full deck. I uh, I have totally and completely lost control of my show, which makes me feel very very uncomfortable. Oh, it gives you an easy day. I am I am going to do something I do not often do. I am going to beg and plead with you. Oh God. To get us away from the things that fascinate Jeffy and Sharon. And to bring us back to some semblance of, of normalcy, to some semblance of of of, uh, of a topic or a subject matter that might be of interest to people who are playing with full deck. So, I am now going to push my chair back here. You know okay? what they say about topics? I am going to get on my knees. Pile of crap. I am... Ba oh, oh, you're going to hurt yourself, yes, Bobby. No, God, am. you're never going to get back up again. I am on my knees. <laughs> I am... Begging you. You are. Please fill these lines to the point where the crazies can't get through. I didn't think you I'm could... begging. My hands are clasped. I am on my knees. Ooh. I didn't... Please. I really didn't please think you like that. Help me get control of my show back again. Please. Some generic athletic cream. 576 WSUN in Pinellas. Help you get back In up. Hillsborough, 221 WSUN. Or, of course, uh, toll free, 1 800 356 WSUN. Please. I'm begging. I'm begging. <laughs> it's 3 30. The Gary Spivey Show.